Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast this week in America. Penny McCoy went from being a world champion and pretty penny in alpine skiing at the age of 16 to experiencing heartbreak and worldwide humiliation in the following Olympics. This set Penny into a tailspin of brokenness affecting every area of her life. She took an identity of ugly duckling, making wrong choice after wrong choice, leading to a life of failure, heartbreak, and loss. Penny is now a vibrant vessel, fulfilling her God-breathed destiny by sharing God the Father's heart of life, freedom, healing, faithfulness, and unfailing love through her gifts and her talents. It's her hope the captive is set free and the broken become whole so they can be who God created them to be and do what God created them to do. Penny McCoy is the author of I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth, a book she hopes will be a launching pad to destiny and freedom. And Penny joins us now on This Week in America. Penny, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. It is such a powerful message, and I'm looking forward to having you share this with, with our listeners on the program today. I did a little background there. First of all, let's talk about the purpose of the book, why you decided this book's important. I really need to share this message. Um, well, first of all, uh, in distinguishing the book, I would like to say that the book is written from God's perspective, from, from his heart to our father to our heart to his children. And so that's, that's the the perspective that we need to look at this. Um, the book, the purpose of the book, the really main feature and, and core purpose of it is an issue of identity. And it's, it's a book that recognizes the identity of God as well as the identity of us as individual people. It's like if the enemy of our lives can change or the destroy our identity or God's identity, he really has it. I mean, God becomes dead then, he becomes powerless, and we become objects of broken vessels. And I, to make my point, I was speaking with my grandchildren not long ago, and some of the kids that they go to school with, they're now saying they are not people. They're neither male nor female, but they're objects. I mean, even one of them was a table, you know? So. If we can become objects, then we're then we're we're nothing. But as you and I know, those are all lies. And God is the truth, and He's come to set us free. And in this book, it shows that perspective of His heart that He's come to set us free, and He's the truth, no matter. And and that is the truth, no matter if someone believes it or not. But it really establishes that in the midst of everything that's going on today. There is a God who loves them, and his love is really shrouded in his character and holiness, and his love is truly released through his son. That's an important message, always has been, but maybe more important now than ever before. Penny McCoy, our guest on the program, her book is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. What do you hope to achieve from the book? What do you hope people take away from, from reading the book I Am Amidst You Now? Well, I see it now, uh, uh, first of all, I want people to have a sense how God truly sees them. I hope they take it away, at this point away, that no matter what they've done wrong or how evil they might see themselves or how ashamed they are or how much guilt they have or regret or what have you, you know, how much anger or what have you, disappointment, that any of those things are not greater than his forgiveness and love for them. That's the first and foremost important thing. Then the next thing, I'd like them to know that his children are always his focus, that they always have been, they, they're his focus now, and they always will be his focus. In essence, they're really the apple of his eye. And I see this as a fatherless generation has been a fatherless generation for several decades when I actually started, you know, um, receiving these things from God. And in that, uh, there's an orphan spirit in the world today where people feel like they're forgotten. And I hope that this book sparks something in them that leaves no room for any doubt that they are orphaned or forgotten. That, that's 
that's my hope. Who is the main target for the book? And I ask that thinking probably all of us, aren't we all targets and could, could really benefit from reading your book? Yes. I see that we are all as children. Yes. We're, no matter our age, no matter where we're from, the nation we come from, anything, that we're all his children in the sense that he created each of us. You know, it doesn't matter whether we're poor or rich or, quote, and I say, quote, powerful or influential, whether we're fearful or strong or destitute or fulfilled. It doesn't matter whether we're homeless, whether we live in the you know, the most elaborate castle on earth, or whether we're 150 years old, or whether we're in the womb. I just feel like I, we are all his children. So this book, I believe, targets anyone. You've mentioned his children, and that, that's so powerful. What do you hope to convey to us as his children? What role do we play as his children? Okay. Um, to me, that's rather a multifaceted answer. There's a multi yeah, take your time. You, you, you don't have to, just 30 okay. seconds to answer that because I threw a whole okay. lot out you, at you out there to, uh, to, to approach this. So, so take your time because I think it's, a, it's a very important for us to realize the role we play. Okay. So most important, when anyone picks up this book, I hope they feel safe in opening it and reading it. You know, I hope it's not, like, threatening to them. And I hope that it's a broken world, it's a hurting world out there. So I hope that the broken and hurting people with a misunderstanding of the real true heart of God for them, uh, that they have a flood of revelation of his love for them. And I hope it, it reaches to the largest skeptic and agnostic and, if you will, quote, God, Jesus, hater. And I, I, I pray that they'll suddenly be led by the Spirit of God to pick up the book and read it and just allow it to speak to them. And as it speaks to them, it's my hope that it changes their night to his day. You know, that their, their darkness would become light and their hopelessness would become, would become hope. And that they would begin, there would begin to be a seed in them that the lies that they've been believing would become that his truth would take their place and they would be they would see uh, a way they would see that they could be set free yes and i hope that every heart that reads it knows the hope of their god-given destiny and calling because they've all got one and that they would be have some kind of understanding of the rich inheritance they have in him and that they would would have a different magnitude of his love for them, that it is of its height and its depth and its width and its length, you know, it's all-consuming love for them, that it's unfailing, it's eternal, it's unconditional, and he's always, always faithful with it. And, and most of all, um, I believe I, I, I would pray that people's souls literally receive the revelation that Jesus is Lord and to, that he and the Father are one, and that Jesus is the only way to the Father, and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for their, their very being. That's what I hope most of all. I hope it just penetrates their soul and sets them free in that aspect. The book is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth by Penny McCoy. The book's available at Amazon, of course. You'll find it at strattonpress.com, stratton-press.com in their bookstore. You'll find uh, all of this information. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, to get information on uh, on Penny and the book, I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. Uh, We're talking about it on today's program, a very important conversation. You mentioned the true heart of God as our Father. Can you expand on that? That caught my attention. Can you expand on that just a little bit? What exactly you mean by that? Yes, uh, I touched on it a bit, but truly the real heart of God is, uh, God is our Father as how God truly sees them. You know, it's that, that's how. So many people have an identity of brokenness. I mean, I had, and that's where I made my choices from. And people have an identity of shame, you know, they're living in shame, 
many people have a feeling they're a disappointment. And I really feel, as I prayed and prepared for this, that the disappointment that someone's on this phone call, uh, someone's on this, this program right now listening, that feels, that believes they're a disappointment. And I just want to speak to them and say that you are not a disappointment to God. You are not. And, and you're not worthless. You're not insin- insignificant. But you're important. And so the true heart of God really sees us as we're the most important, important thing. We're so important that he bought us with the price that his son sacrificed his life for us. And that he bought us not to be a slave or not to be property, but he redeemed us back to the Father so that we do have a Heavenly Father that loves us and that has a purpose for us, an eternal purpose for us. And so um, that that's what I mean. And in this, there needs to be an understanding that we all have a choice. We can either receive God for who he is or we can reject him. And the choice is ours to make, and you and I are no different, Rick. You know, nobody is different. And I think it's really important in the end for all, all of us to be sure that all the other gods out there are frauds. They're frauds compared to the real God and to the real heart of God that's true on their behalf. The title of the book is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father Healing My Truth. Talk about that aspect of it, healing my truth. Talk a little bit about what you mean by that. Okay. Well, in this day and age especially, I believe his truth has been twisted and turned and convoluted to suit the enemy's plan for destruction, you know, for a person's destruction. And it's it's a time now where the Bible is spoken that there'll be a time when good is called evil and evil is called good. And this is a world that's on a relentless quest of lies and deception in every facet of life. And I believe the greatest lie perpetrated is that God is dead, that he doesn't see or care what happens to us, and that he he really doesn't hear the cries of his children. Actually, the quest is that he doesn't exist at all, but we know these are lies. So... The book really expounds on healing, healing his truth that has been twisted and convoluted. The truth is he's very much alive. He has eyes to see, he has ears to hear, and he has a mouth that speaks with a voice that truly confronts evil in all its forms. And I believe that this is an era like no other where his voice, that's what his voice of truth and justice, you can kind of see it happening, but his voice of truth and justice will be heard above the vo- voice of lies and deception. And I think in that, um, what I mean by here almost is what people are going to see and then what they're beginning to see will be what they hear. Do you understand? Like a picture is yes. worth more than a thousand words. So in this, lies really last for a moment, but the truth stands the test of time. And let's face it, if the enemy convinced the world that God is dead, or has never been, or there was never a cross and crucifixion, it negates everything else he is or has been. So, or so they think, and I I just want to reiterate, just because someone believes God isn't alive doesn't mean it is true. You know, so I I believe that God is on... as the enemy is on a quest to to prove he's dead and doesn't exist, God is moving in a way nowadays through his spirit to heal that twisted lie of his truth. Do you understand what I mean? Exactly what you mean. And in, in, it's all in the book, I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth, by Penny McCoy, the author, and our guest on the program. In the book, I Am Amidst You Now, you've got 10 distinct messages what are the the top two, and why do you feel they're in the top two? Okay. Well, for today, because, you know, every day is different. <laughs> exactly, so yes. One thing to be different. But actually, overall, the, the top two would be crucified and prison child. And the reason being is because they're both kind of on the other end of the spectrum, and I'll ex- explain why. You know, God is a whole God. He's a God... 
Um, so he's a God that calls us to account and challenges us, and he's a God that comforts us and gives us life and hope and love that fail that's unfailing and faithful. So I'll start with crucified first. Crucif- crucified is one that calls us to account and challenges us not to compromise. Because if we compromise, it really chills our soul. And and I look at our soul as being who God really created us to be and what he really created us to do. That's the way I look at our soul as I've done a real study of it and, and, and thought about it through the years. And so I look, if we compromise who he has us being or what he has us doing, if we compromise his character in us, then that compromises who he truly created us to be and what he truly created us to do. And then we become vulnerable to who and what others or what circumstances or what our own good idea creates us to be and do. And in the Bible, I have a scripture that I really like concerning that. It's 1 Peter 1, 9, and it's in the Living Translation. And it says, your, re- your reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. So I love that because if you trust him, if you know his truth and his promises and you trust him in that, then you are able to rise over the lies and deception and you're able to really follow his voice and do what he says to do, and become who he created you to be, and do what he created you to do. In essence, your soul will be saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Okay, so crucified shows that the Lord really has sorrow over our lack of care for him. I mean, we don't really think about that a lot, but um, it magnifies the fact that if everything's going great, and as planned, as our plans are planned, and that our prayers are answered before we even finish it, then we're okay with God, we love him. But on the other hand, it shows when things don't go as we plan, we have a tendency to dishonor or not care about what he did for us by the way we live without a thought for him. So it really reiterates that he has feelings, as we do, and that he weeps as he watches his children go astray and live as if we don't even really care about him. So, can I read a, a little passage? Certainly, please. Message? Yes, please do. Okay. So I have, my children, there are times when it seems easy for you to see me. There are also times of ease when it is, it is easy to believe, and the answers are there before your prayer. However, there are times when the waters of life rise, and the dryness of wilderness seasons attempt to blind you to who I am and what I have done. I am that I am, and I am, Almighty God. I am eternity from beginning to the end that never will be and never has been. I am the truth, and the truth is me, and I am amidst you now, healing my truth and exposing the world's unbelief. It matters not what you believe. It changes not the truth that I am who I say I am. My blood was poured out to purchase your soul. My will was given up so you could be my very own. How easily it is to forget the price I paid. Rampant is the wavering with no thought of the fee upon my head. It wasn't a crown of jewels that graced my brow. It was the crown of thorns, shrouding my dignity, marring me with humility and disgrace. Please consider, do you even really care? Oh, how easy it is to forget the cross because I am on the other side. Consider the cross as the weapon that opened the door to my resurrection and your salvation. I am amidst you now, healing my truth, so the lie will be found out. The truth is, I paid the price no one else could. I overcame the grave, suffered the shame, wore the pain, took on humility's face, offered my spirit and faith, gave up my will for my father's instead, and love you to the grave and rose again. The truth is, I spared nothing for your sake. So, that's a little taste of that. <laughs> well, yes, that's so, such a, a, a powerful and important message. Our, our guest on the program, if you just joined us, uh, Penny McCoy, talking about her book, I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. The book's available at 
Amazon at uh, Stratton Press. That's stratton-press.com in the uh, the book section. A couple of minutes left in the program. Time is going by too quickly. I know in the book you talk about there's a battle going on. What's the battle and what does it mean for us today? Because I think this is very important. Yes. Okay, I believe the battle that's going on is a battle between the darkness and the light. And it, it, it really comes out in the book. That's the main theme in the book. And it is not between darkness and light, but it's the darkness and the light. And I believe it's a battle of voices. It's the battle of the voices of evil or the voices of God. Evil that brings destruction, God that brings healing. Or it's the battle of God's word bringing life or the enemy's lies and deception that brings death. Or I could say it's the battle of God's good news bringing salvation or fake news and and more than, you know, news you see on TV. But yes. fake news in every respect trying to negate faith. Um, so I believe it's really literally a face-off between the darkness and the light. But the light shines in the darkness. And, you know, when you go in a room, a dark room, and people are doing bad things or what have you, and you slip on the light, it, it shows what's going on. Exactly. And they flee. The darkness flees. And so I believe that's the battle that's going on. It's a battle between the true light of God, that is still the true light of God, that the darkness always succumbs to, whether we believe it or not. So. I know you're doing some interesting things with the, the proceeds from the book. Talk about that briefly here at the end of the program. Yes. Um, I... I've always made a covenant with the, with the Lord that whatever country I might receive proceeds or royalties in, I plan on giving it back to that country where it is needed to help children. And uh, children of all ages, as we spoke about earlier, children uh, that are babies to the elderly. And, you know, children in the womb, children that are abused. Uh, I would like to put it into women's shelters and orphanages and care centers for elderly and places of safety for unwed mothers or unborn babies. But it's my it's my heart to give it back to the country where I receive it. Because that, I hope that this book is translated into many languages and many nations then, so I could do that. I was going to say that would really be necessary to get this message out there to people the world around. And the book is, I am amidst you now, God the Father, healing my truth. Penny McCoy with us on the program. A a minute or so left in the program. People probably joining us within the program since the program's been on. Why don't you sum it up in in a phrase or two? Sum up the book. I know it's difficult to, to do that, but just give us a sort of a summary in a couple of phrases. Okay, so sum up the book. Always remember it's written from the per- God's perspective to us. And in that, it's him speaking this. And I believe he would say, I am not dead, I am alive, and I am risen, and you are forgiven. You are forgiven. All of you, you are forgiven. That's, I'm let that sit for a second because that, that's so important. Penny McCoy, our guest on the program, her book is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. Uh, Penny is our guest on the program today. The book's available at Amazon.com in the bookstore. Also, StrattonPress.com. That's Stratton-Press.com in the book section there. Penny, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Congratulations on the, the very powerful book that you've written, a successful book. Thank you for being with us and sharing on the program today. Thank you so much for having me. It has been our Thank pleasure. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, Penny, and you too. And the, the book is by Penny McCoy. I am amidst you now, God the Father, healing my truth. You'll find information on the book on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after we pause for these messages. <laughs> 